Hey, welcome back to the workshop, guys. We have an awesome restoration today. Uh, a brand that I really love and that I think to some degree still exists today, but in a very small fashion, but that is the Marbles brand. They've made a lot of really nice stuff, but their older stuff, especially like this territory, this realm right here, man, they, they did some fine work. A lot of this style with the leather stack incorporated that in most of their knives to my knowledge. But let's have a close look at this piece. We're gonna do full restoration on it. Guys, before we dive into the restorations, you can see dad working here behind me. And uh, we have fresh knives coming off of the uh, production line, heading to the website that I try, we're trying really hard to keep it stocked this year. I thank you all so much for the support. Really, really wonderful support. But uh, if you're looking for something, limited stock on everything. So we're doing our best to keep up, but uh, make sure you go check that out now if you're looking for a beautiful can knives creation. Okay, let's have a look at this treasure here. Look at that classic marbles design. Now, if you look, we have uh, right here, almost have lost the marbles insignia. We have just the bottom half of it, and then we have Gladstone, Michigan, USA. That's very nicely legible, but the marbles is almost worn off. Looks like I see these grind marks here, um, I guess taken off pretty much from a, a previous scarring or sharpening session or something like that. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do with the blade of this. The customer hasn't requested like a full blade refinish and that is a labor intensive process. If, you're, if you come across one of these in an antique store, and you're willing to put in the time yourself, it's not costing you anything, only your time, then pick away at it for weeks if you want. Just spend a little time here, a little time there in the evenings, and you could refinish that blade to a gleaming mirror if you wanted, but to pay for that service for a craftsman like me, that's a very labor-intensive process, and the client's not gonna go that route. We'll do our best in an in a economical fashion. We've got that leather stack handle, brass guard, and the handle is very nicely intact, although we'll probably strip it and refinish it all the way up, including the brass. But back near the pummel, we have some looseness, very loose and sloppy here. So we'll remove this brass nut. We'll probably have to recut the nut because it uh, seems to be a little shallow there. We'll refinish the pummel. We may even have to machine out the pummel a little bit Let's get to work disassembling it. That's the first step, and we'll see what we have to do. Now, I, I've made several of these little tools now for removing these nuts because there is no existing tool or screwdriver that can really fit it. Now, all of these nuts are basically the same idea, and the one tool fit most of them, but in the last, last one of these I rebuilt, I had to grind my tool down. You can see it's real, real fine there. But in this one, super sloppy, because it's just a, a big difference in the notch. Big difference. This is a pretty big around and shallow nut, brass nut. But let's take this apart. So you can see what's going on here. Now, this is spinning because we don't have enough shoulder here. This shoulder of the tang let me just pull off a couple of these pieces. You see that shoulder? How it widens out? That should bite like that and give us a little hold, but we seem to be out too far. I might just remove one of these leather discs just so this can plank right down and uh, give us a little more resistance to spin. So let's do that here now. I'm going to find that last one is almost uh, indistinguishable. Let's just pop off one of those discs like that and see what kind of fit up we can get then. Like so. And now we have a bit of shoulder to bite. So I think that's the route we're going to go. So we can have a better fit up. I'm thinking, because the, these are pretty robust, 
I'm thinking we have a little bit of swelling going on these handles. It looks like they're kind of oil saturated over the years, so probably pushed, pushed back a little bit. Now we're in the grinding room here now, and the first step I want to address is that blade because it could potentially be a, a little bit of work there. And I don't want to beautifully finish that brass guard and that leather stack and then a lot of working and dipping in water and cooling on uh, when we're working on the blade and mess it all up again. So I'm going to go, go ahead. We're going to do that blade work first. I think I may be going to get like a tough call with this because once you start, you're kind of, you're in it then. You're in it. I think maybe I'll go to a Trizac belt. Thick, little spongy. I'll give it some good working. We'll take out a lot of that scarring, switch to maybe like a cork belt, and uh, see what kind of finish. Something close to a satin. Still lots of imperfections because we have some deep notches carved in this blade, but it'll look a heck of a lot better than it does right now. So here's the belt I'm talking about. And uh, what you would call this is a structured abrasive. Now, Trizac is kind of the flagship brand. I don't think this is a Trizac. This is a, uh, a Norton, what, X16? Norton X16 here. But you can see you have those notches in between. That helps a lot with cooling and gives a, a beautiful, um, just a beautiful satin texture. This may be a little bit fine. They tend to cut really well. It's a ceramic abrasive, I believe. Uh, they're just real nice belt for this type of application. Let's get out of the dust collector here. So I'll go back up against a hard platen again now, along with a cork belt. Let me show you guys what a cork belt looks like. So here's a cork belt, partially worn, so we have some of the little stubby uh, little tips got off the cork, but that's, that is what this belt is. It's a belt coated with like a, a cork-like material. And it's got a little, it's, it is a little abrasive, and you can work in some polishing compound into these if you wanted, but just as is, it just does a beautiful job of smoothing out the striation, just taking a little texture out of the striation of the belt you're going to use before it. And here is that marbles blade right now. I know, I know, it's <laughs> definitely a lot better than I was intending to go. I left a little of the character in there. I didn't work to, I could have worked for another half hour and just got this thing spotless, but I chose not to do that. This is kind of that happy medium, little dabs of character throughout still. You can see I've taken all that recurve out of there, which is why we're left with this little jot here now. Probably leave that just like it is. I like the look of that. We'll run this on the cork now and just refine this finish. So there we have that satin finish left by the cork belt. Real nice, like this is a real nice finish just as is. As is. Gonna hit it with the buffer now. That'll just put a little gleam on it and that'll draw away, draw your attention away from some of the imperfections and stuff. Uh, and it just should give a real nice look. And have a look, that is the finish we're left with. Isn't that beautiful? You can see there, I scuffed up on that brass, brought that brass in, even though we're gonna strip this handle and refinish it. A little bit of smudging there. Get off of there. But lovely finish, you can see still some of those imperfections. Like I said, we I didn't even intend to take it this far, but so pleased I did, and I think the client it's really gonna appreciate the level of uh, finish we got this blade up to. Just a beautiful piece, look at that. 
beautiful marbles blade. Let's tape up the blade now, the other half. Let's get to work on the back half of the knife. Just going to go ahead, first step here now guys, and clean up that tang. Clean up those threads, the end of that, get rid of the oxidation. The soft wire wheel for this, I don't want to do too much removal of those threads. Ideally none at all, but of course you end up smoothing them off a little bit. So as I said, I'm going to recut this uh, this brass nut here now because it's pretty rough. It's uh, the sides of that channel have been torn out over the years, so pretty hard looking. So I'm just going to take a file. It's brass, so it's not going to be too hard. I'm just going to cut some nice crisp edges in there. Okay, let's do a reinstall here. That tool has some nice deep channels to bite into now. So there we go, reassembly, just a touch shorter, we'll snip off the tang. And uh, now we've got this slip down over the shoulder properly. I couldn't have milled that any deeper, it was already very deep. We just had no shoulder, the tang is not long enough, so no way really to fix that. What we'll do now is carve this down. You can see these pieces now aren't exactly flush fitting anymore. I'll strip this whole handle down. We'll run into that aluminum pummel. We'll blend those lines in. This is gonna be stunning. Here we go, a slack belt 60 just until we carve off the bulk of that leather finish and uh, and trim that down then we'll go up really quickly to a higher grit. I'll also trim up the end of that pummel as well. You can see the end of that pummel I just snipped off the the, the end of the tang there. Pretty rough looking. It's gonna look different than that in a minute. I've worked up to a 400 satin finish, which is really pretty, but I want to knock off some of those facets. So I'm going to go ahead, go to my buffer, and this, on aluminum like this, this will produce a gleaming mirror polish. Be careful not to get up on the, the leather there. Don't want to mess that up too much. But there you go, you can see that finish coming in there now. Look at that finish. Just lovely there. And this thing, definitely gonna be a, a stunning piece. Just sitting down for supper here, guys. Dad went and picked up, mom cooked for us. Uh, rabbit, vegetables, gravy. The whole works, look at this, Dad just finished up a gorgeous batch of knives here. And this restoration, let's have a look here. Look at that. Mmm, I could not be more pleased. Definitely went a lot farther with it than I, than I expected. I didn't figure it would, you know, go so smoothly and then that blade would clean up so good, but that, that steel 
those old steels, really nice to work with. Hope you enjoyed this one. Again, check out our website. You'll be able to see a lot of this stock up there right now, kylemosley.com. We're going to get to eating supper. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here. Leave me a comment down below. And I hope to see you in part two. We're going to be continuing this project. We're going to be doing a stone sharpening. We've got to build a uh, like period leather sheath for this piece. So you want to come back for that. Thanks for watching. We're eating supper. We'll see you in the next video. Lord, we want to thank you this day. Thank you for this food. We ask you to bless it for us in your souls. In your name, amen. Amen.